to make a quick video showing um, me making the sunflower. I see a lot of questions on that. So I have an orange cutter. Um, I want to say I got this from Michaels. Maybe not. But then I have a circle cutter. And I got the mini circle on Amazon. And it came with a whole set of different shapes. Um, it really wasn't expensive. I can't remember the exact price, but I'll put the link below. But it took like three months to come. I think it came from China and it happened right after the shutdown. So it took me a really long time to get it, but totally worth it. Um, I do say I'm a lot, sorry. I get nervous on camera. But the scent today that I'm going to be making is Beautiful Day. I'm going to try and answer some of the basic questions that I see a lot in groups. So there are some pretty bad YouTube videos out there giving bad advice to freshie makers. And I'm not sure if they do this to try and deter you from making freshies, like giving you bad advice purposely, or if they're just clueless and really haven't done their research to know. So I've been making freshies over a year now. Um, and I, in the past, probably since July, I think, is when I started selling freshie products too. So I sell cured beads, micas, um, poly mailers, the bags for them to go in. I sell a little bit of all of it. So I've done tons of research and um, joined some Facebook groups. There's some really good groups out there that give you good sound advice. So join them and please stay away from the bad YouTube videos. To start with, these are plastic containers. I got these from Dollar Tree. They're a dollar. So they have to have, let me see, don't know if you can see it, they have to have the five on the bottom. They have to. If not, it's going to eat your sin away. So these are good for storing beads. Um, the other ones that I use are big glass, these are like pickle jar size. These were not pickle jars. There is a uh, a local glass wholesaler in my town so I was able to pick up a ton of these and unfortunately I've not been able to get any more so I went to these so these are more expensive and bigger um, but I tend to like these a little better just because they're glass I really don't have a reason I just like these and I like that on these I can flip them upside down and store so when I do beads I do large quantities because once again I sell but um as you shake them, I get tired of shaking them. So what I do when they're in jars is I just go and flip them upside down and I'm done. With these, I tend to notice that oil will occasionally leak. So I don't like to do that. So with these, I have to sit there and shake. So to start with, I seen one video in particular that talked about you want to add more oil right before you bake your beads or something. if they're too dry. You don't want to bake wet beads. You want your beads to be dry. So when you look at my beads, they are dry. There is no moisture in these. They've already soaked the scent up and they have cured. So your ratios for beads to oil, you want to do eight ounces of beads to either one ounce of oil or two. So it's either eight to one or eight to two, whatever your preference. Um, measure by weight not by volume. I literally cannot stress that enough. Measure by weight. So you want to have a scale. I got these scales from Amazon. I have probably four of them. They're not expensive. They are good scales. The only thing they're not great for is, I think I shipped a package yesterday that was like 12 pounds. It wouldn't weigh it. It doesn't go that high. So I had to use a regular scale for that, but they are perfect for oils. Um, so the whole reason you want to measure by weight is because oils weigh differently and that is how companies sell the oils. So I'm going to show you. These are my oils because I have my own line of oils now that I sell. So this one is blueberry cheesecake. If you notice, it's eight ounces. Okay. This one is butt naked. Once again, eight ounces. So I'm going to turn these around and if you look, there is a difference by how much is in there. They are filled by weight. So these are both eight ounces, but there's a huge difference. Blueberry cheesecake is a much heavier oil and it is a yellow, so it will give your beads a yellow tint, but nothing that you can't cover with a little mica. So 
So today I am doing the beautiful day. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started. All right, excuse the mess, I am in the garage. I am about to move into a warehouse, but I'm waiting for the person to get out of it because I have stuff everywhere. So the way I do it is I start with my cutter. Now I keep um, mason jars. When I first started making freshies, these are the size I used, but I'm doing much larger quantities now, so I've upgraded. So I saved some of these jars and I measure my beads out. Um, when I first started, I didn't measure out and I wasted a lot. So it works much better if you measure before. So I have an old pan that I use. I just dump some in there. These are gonna be my yellow. Then I'm gonna put this one in there. Just gonna grab a little, fill it up. All right, on the black, I do tend to do a little bit more just because I pull it up, and I will show you that when I get there. Okay, so I have my mica powders. Um, I had originally started with, you can kind of see it over here, um, mica powder kit off Amazon. And it works okay, but the colors weren't as vibrant as I wanted. So I found another company that I like, and I actually um, sell micas now too. So if you need micas, go check out my website. And I am going to be using Taxi and Oyster today for my sunflower. So this is a 0.15 cc spoon. And all I do is I keep my spoon for my yellows. I use that for all my yellows. Um, just put it in. I do one scoop, and then I just shake it. Same with the oyster. And this one I will not do a full scoop because there's only a handful of beads in there. Um, another question I see a lot is liquid versus mica. Um, they both have their pros and cons. Liquid gives you wet, wetter, I guess would be the way to describe it, wetter looking colors. Um, I'm not really sure how else to describe that. And your blacks and your reds, you can get a much richer color. But mica, you have a lot more color choices. So my liquid dye, what I did was I got them from Candle Science and the liquid dye, they have these droppers that come with them, but every one I've had has started leaking and it gets everywhere. So what I did was I ordered these off Amazon. These are glass and I dumped mine into this and just put a label on it so I knew what color it was. And I've not had any problems with these leaking yet. So it's totally worth the purchase. They go a long way. And now I don't have to worry about my hands getting all nasty from liquid dye being everywhere. So I have my yellow shook up. I have my black shook up. I don't need the scales. So I'm going to put my cutter. Okay, I use a nonstick pan. When I first started, I don't see them right here with me, I used other pans and they worked fine, but I had to put parchment paper down. Um, I see some people rip the parchment paper and put what the scent is. I've seen a lot of things. I personally don't like that because it's one more consumable that's costing me money. So instead, okay, so instead, I like to use these, I got them probably on Amazon, and they're non-stick, so I don't have to spray them, I don't have to do anything. So I'm gonna put that down. Oh. I go 350, and then I'm just gonna turn the time up just because I always turn it up just so, that way I don't have to mess with it. Okay, when I do my toaster oven, I use at 350 for 10 minutes with mica. If I'm using liquid, it bakes faster, so I do 350 for seven and a half minutes. And then so I have my sunflower. I'm trying to just 
make it where you can see it in the video. Let's just scoot it closer. That way. Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and put the center in. One other thing that I do use is I use roll pins instead of roofing nails. Um, I've not used roofing nails, so I can't tell you the pros and cons of those. These I like. They're perfect size. They were found at a local hardware store in my town. So it's um, not at Home Depot or Lowe's. It is at a mom and pop hardware store, but they work perfect. So the only con that I can tell you about these is that sometimes the beads bake into it. So it's not that big of a deal, but occasionally I'll have to like get something and pull these out if it starts giving me a problem, like it won't stand up straight or something like that. Okay, so back to my sunflower. I'm trying to scoot it. Okay, so I always start with the outside and I'm just gonna fill it. If you hear kids screaming, don't mind them. They're, they're alive. They're fine. I do keep plastic tweezers on hand to get any little mistakes that happen. I see some people don't pick up their beads when they fall. I do. I spend a lot of time on my beads. I It takes a lot of product. This is not a cheap hobby, and that's something I see people get the mistake of all the time. They think, oh, for $30, I can make freshies. I have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars invested in my freshies. Totally worth it, but don't think that you can just, oh, for, you know, 20 or 30 bucks, I can have this lucrative hobby. It takes money to make money, so you have to be willing to invest. And the only other thing I see people do that really irritates me is they undersell themselves. They're not paying themselves for their time, their knowledge. This is your craft. Be proud of it. Don't undersell you on your freshies for, you know, five bucks when it takes you two to make them. So is it really worth you making $3 to spend 30 minutes making a freshie? Like, no, you're worth more than, what, $6 an hour. So don't underprice yourself. I sell all of my freshies um, for $10. That's whether they're decorated, not decorated. I don't sell really small freshies. I tend to do this size. So all of mine are $10. I know some people go more than that. That's totally okay. Just don't undersell yourself. Learn your clientele. Learn what works in your area. For me, when I first started, I had them at like 5, 7, and 9, or 5, 7, and 10. And it was confusing for me. It was confusing for the customers. Like, oh, why is, you know, this sunflower 5, but this one 9? It's like, oh, well, the size, or this, or that, or, you know, that's probably not the best example, but... It's better just to have consistent. So mine is the same whether I decorate it or not. So once I have the outside, I'm going to fill the inside. Now, I think the very first time I made a freshie doing two cutters, I made the mistake of not pulling it. And so if you bake it like this, the center will not be in. So when you pull it out, you're going to have a big gaping hole in the middle. So you want to make sure once you fill it, I take and very carefully just pull it up a little. And this is how I will bake it because what it's done is it has created a layer on the bottom that will bake with the yellow so it'll be connected. So now I'm going to just add a little bit more around it and fill it up some more. This cutter isn't quite as deep as my sunflower, the circle isn't, so I have to fill it up a little bit more once I finish. Um, another question that I see a lot of 
is wondering how far to fill your cutters. It's totally preference. I prefer to fill mine pretty close to the top unless it is a ridiculously large cutter. My scrub cutter is very large, so that one I only fill about three quarters. So a few of the big, big ones I do not like to. And what I do do is if I am making a pile of these, I'll measure out so that way I can go ahead and I don't have to measure each time I'll weigh it and be like, okay, so this sunflower is two ounces of beads. Um, 1.8 ounces is the yellow and 0.2 ounces or 0.02 ounces is the black. So if I'm making a bunch of the same one, I will do that. But other than that, I don't just because I don't want to take the time to sit here and do it. I know some people do, and that's great. Um, and I maybe would if I was making larger quantities of the same exact one. I tend to sell mine to wholesalers. Um, I have a few wholesale places in town that I sell to. And with them, I normally do like 20 different shapes and 20 different scents. So it's not really worth it for me to measure it out. Okay, so I'm going to pull it up just a tad more. All right, so that is my cutter. It's filled. It looks good. The only thing I'm going to do is add my roll pin. And if you don't, you can drill after some of my shapes. If they're thinner, I'm going to have to drill after. Like if it's too small for me to put the roll pin in or I feel like it's not going to bake correctly, then I'll drill after, but that's a lot messier, and I like it to be as easy as possible. So I do not think this went all the way. So this one I probably need to work on pulling that middle part out that baked in because I push it in until I can feel the metal, and I can't right now. So I'm probably going to have to drill some of that out at the end, but that's okay. All right, so I am done. I pulled these out of the oven. It is good to go. I see a video that suggested, go ahead as soon as you can touch it and pop it out. Don't do that, you're gonna burn the crap out of yourself. Let it cool. It will literally fall out of the cutter once it cools. So I'll let it cool about 20 minutes and then I will pull the cutters out and the roll pin and it will be good. I'll check back with you. Hey, so it's been about 20 minutes. Um, so I have my cutter. Let me show you. Okay, my cutter. I can touch it. It's not killing me. So. It's pretty easy to pop out. Of course, now that I say that and I'm on a video doing it, it's not gonna wanna pop out. So this one I just pull right up. It's the circle. Perfect. So, there it goes. This never happens and then of course the one second I'm videoing it it wants to be a pain in the butt so all I do is I pop in right around the edges and it makes it where it releases very nicely there it goes see okay that's normally how it goes so I am done so as you can see the orange did leave some of my tips a little orange but I love the way that looks on the sunflower so I leave it some people trim their um, edges I do not the only thing I do trim is right here where the hole is so the hole is pretty good I did have a little bit of the bead like the one side it baked in so it's not that big of a deal all I have to do is push this right through and it comes out pretty easy so that's the most that happens occasionally with the roll pins but overall I'm still happy with them they work so I'm not gonna attempt to do roof nails or anything like that because it works okay so from here I cut the string um, and bag it so my bags I put a piece of cardstock in there 
There are some people who say you should not use cardstock in there. I have not had a problem, but mine also do not sit very long. So this is going to be for an order that I'm taking up this afternoon. So I don't have to worry about, these are going to be sold within, I'd say, three days. So if you were to leave it for a really long time, possibly some of the scent could soak off into this. I've not tested it to try it. So totally your call. For me, I just like the way it keeps it stiff and I can hang it um, at the gas station I sell at. So I do use Avery labels and I have, this one was beautiful day, so I printed it off. And the whole reason I do this is before I used to do it where the scent was on the back. So now on the back, I made a QR code that connects you to my Facebook group, the Facebook telling you to go to the Facebook and then my logo. Um, I put that on the front. I do it on the front because they hang it on those shields that are around the counters everywhere now. So they tape them on the inside to that. In the very first batch I did, they didn't, like they were having to constantly tell the people what the scent was. So now I do it this way so the scent is right on the front. Um, I see a lot of questions about the perfect length for string. I do mine 18 inches. Um, this board is 18 inches. My husband cut it for me. And this board kind of has two purposes. I can, I use it to measure the string. And a lot of times I'll have my eight-year-old cut the string for me. And then I also do it because it's a perfect background for when I want to take pictures. If I use, don't use my light box. So I do not tie the strings. I let the customers tie them because some like them um, up tighter against their mirror. Some do not. So it's kind of just a preference. So I leave that to them. So I slide this in the bag. Um, you want to make sure you get the correct bags. It's the polypropylene. I hope I'm saying that right. So you want to make sure you're getting the right bag so it doesn't eat your scent. That is it. I like the ones that hang because I hang most of my stuff. So it just makes it easier for me. And then I also like that it's resealable. So some of the places I have them at, the customers can actually like open, smell, and then reseal. And I don't have to worry about my bags getting ruined or anything like that. So that is the Sunflower Freshie. I hope it was beneficial. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them below. I will attach a few links for where I get stuff and I'll put my website on there. I also sell the bags on my website and I have this size and the next size up. And the next size up, um, I tend to use for my larger ones, which would be my stethoscope. You see my kid poking her my kids poking their heads through. So, <laughs> uh, the little things amuse them. So I use the bigger bags for, I'd say maybe five or six shapes, but most of mine are this size and they work perfect. So feel free to drop any questions you have. I will do my best to answer them. I'm no, by no means an expert. I'm not saying that. And I understand there are other ways, but there is some really bad advice out there about, just go ahead and put some more liquid in and bake your fresh sheet. It'll be fine. And then you see smoke pouring out of the oven. Like, y'all, that's not right. That's not, you don't want your beads to be wet. If you're using liquid, they will have a wet look. But even still, like liquid dye, let me specify. If you're using liquid dye instead of the micas, they will have a liquid look, but they're still not going to be drenched in oil. Um, you want your oil to dry. This is um, you dumping a bunch of oil in and then baking it. You're baking the oil off. There's, it's a waste. It, and oil's not cheap. It's pretty expensive. It's one of the most expensive things in this hobby. So don't waste your oil. Um, and seriously, if you take away nothing else from this, measure correctly. Please measure correctly. Once again, not by weight or not by volume, but by weight. You want to measure by weight. So invest in a scale. I see so many people think that, oh, I'm just going to get beads, mica, and a cookie cutter and jump in. And they don't think about the little things that you need. So when, like this hobby is not a cheap hobby. It's pretty expensive. But take the time and invest in yourself and in your business. And you're going to be successful. And if you're not, there's tons of us who buy D-Stash. So you can always turn around and get your money back out of it if you decide it's not for you. But I hate to see people, you know go into this thinking it's a quick profit. It's not. It It's taken me a year to build up to where I'm at and I'm still nowhere where I would like to be. I, I still want to build it up even more. So take your time, practice, 
Um, learn the hobby, learn the craft, do your research. There's lots of good videos out there, lots of good Facebook groups. Join them, ask questions, but please use the search bar in the top corner because your question has most likely already been asked and answered. So use that search bar and look up your questions. And if you still can't find it, ask. Um, I have a Facebook group. Feel free to join it and answer, ask any questions you have in there. And um, in my Facebook group is also where I post, like, if I run out of something, I post, hey, this is back in stock. Go check out my website. And then I also run sales or coupons for my website. So you can find me on Etsy or I have a website. My website is www.southernscentsfragrances.com. So I will attach that below. So feel free to go check it out and show me some love. And if you have any questions, let me know. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.